let's uh, speak to Alexander Morozov. He is chief economist at HSBC in Moscow. Uh, welcome to the program, Alexander. So tell us, uh, what does Putin's visit to China mean? What should we be reading into this? Why is China the first stop after he announced his intention to return to the presidency? Well, first of all, China is Russian neighbor, and that's one of the biggest country, and more importantly, one of a growing country. These days, when uh, the global economy decelerates, developing a relationship with China means that the country that can do this successfully can rely on its own growth. Therefore, from the long-term perspective, it's indeed a very good thing that uh, Mr. Putin decided to go to China. Fine. Uh, now, and uh, I was just going to yeah, say, we know and, they're uh, going to be talking about. I would, I would, Go ahead. Well, and I would say uh, Mr. Putin uh, will be talking not just about energy. Of course, the energy issue is very important, perhaps one of the most important these days. But for a longer term perspective for Russia, it's important to develop a broader form of collaboration, economic collaboration from China, and ideally to develop into the sphere uh, where Russia can uh, benefit from high value added goods. And in this respect, uh, uh, creation of uh, joint ventures with Chinese companies that Russia contribute with human capital, technology, and Chinese would contribute right. with uh, its ability to uh, pro uh, produce uh, uh, goods would be uh, the thing that, uh, uh, that uh, the Russian economy and Chinese economy will benefit from. Well, this is all about Russia trying to diversify its economy away from just oil and gas, and it needs China to help it do that. But some people say... You know, China's already buying everything that Russia has to offer in terms of arms and oil. Uh, Russia's going to have to come up with something that it can bring to the table. How can it get this done? Well, uh, there are already good examples when Russian business uh, has uh, uh, developed its uh, um, partnership with China, Chinese companies, and this opens a way for Russian businesses to uh, to develop uh, uh, businesses other than uh, natural resources. But of course, taking account that Chinese economy is growing and it needs energy, it needs uh, other mineral resources, while Russia has a plenty of them, uh, apparently uh, it would unavoidable that uh, Russia will be exporting primarily uh, natural resources to China in the near future. The Russian challenge is to uh, make uh, the uh, Russian exports to China uh, as diversified as possible. So but of course, they'll be heavily biased towards natural resources. They're going to talk about this uh, project, which would see the construction of two pipelines from Siberia to China built. That project's been on hold for a long time because of a gas price dispute. My question is this. Given China's extreme need for natural resources, how can they afford to be squabbling with Russia over prices? Well, uh, it's a long term issue, and uh, uh, basically, it's not that Chinese does not uh, need uh, Russian gas, uh, it's not that uh, Russian uh, Gazprom does not need to export to China, it's a price issue. And uh, um, basically, uh, it's just a negotiation. I believe uh, in the end we'll see uh, an agreement reached. Um, since both parties are interested in terms of uh, in terms of a deal, Russian Gazprom needs to diversify its uh, exports uh, uh, away from uh, Europe and uh, to find uh, new export markets. While Chinese growing economy needs uh, reliable gas supplies from a uh, nearby region rather than right. uh, from exports from uh, f given from uh, other parts of the world. Given that we're likely to see Putin return to the presidency. What does it mean for the economy and for international investors? What would your message be to them right now? Well, we know that uh, Mr. Putin's motto is stability. Therefore, I would not expect uh, any significant changes in policies, at least uh, during uh, the first couple of years of his uh, presidency, if he's elected for president. Um, and uh, from a business perspective, uh, at least uh, uh, they will be know that uh, rules of the game remain as they are today. So it's some sort of stability, not necessarily very favorable investment and business climate, but at least the rules of the, games, uh, uh, rules of the game remain the same. Alexander Morozov, uh, economist for Russia there for HSBC, thank you so much for being on the program. You're welcome.